Hey what's up guys, it's Zerd. Today I'm going to be making a video just giving you guys some tips on how to make a build in 1.4. A lot of stuff has changed and people are just confused like there was over 20 pages of patch notes. It's ridiculous how much has changed. And a lot of people just don't really know what to do and they're kind of lost and don't have any direction as to what to do with their build. So today I'm going to try to kind of bridge that gap and give you guys as much information as I can. Keep in mind though, though a lot of the stuff I'm going to be saying is subjective to the build that you're using and it's really hard for me to narrow down all of the information regarding builds into one video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be giving you a bunch of tips on like what you should roll on your gear, what weapons are really good, weapon mods, etc, etc. I'm not actually going to be showing you guys any specific builds. I'll probably be making build videos in the future. So if you aren't subscribed already, please make sure to do so so that in the future you can see me making builds like this is the best PvP build, this is the best PvE build, this is the best sniping build, etc, etc. But for now, I'm not going to focus on any specific builds. I'm just going to be giving you guys an outline as to what to do with your build currently and just giving you guys a bunch of pointers and information as I have played 1.4 for a while because I did the PTS and everything else and I've done like spreadsheets and math and I've done so much crap to figure out everything. So it's just better that I convey this to you guys as opposed to having you guys be lost. Now before I get into it, I just want to mention that I am still doing build services. Um, this is basically where I just get on your character and then with the current gear that you have, I just make the absolute best build that I currently can. Um, a lot of people are interested in this as they just don't really want to devote as much time into doing the math and just doing research and figuring out everything when it comes to their build. Some people kind of find it ridiculous that other people would want somebody to do this for them, but a lot of people actually find use in it. And I've had a lot of people really happy with the results. So if you're just if you just don't want to have to deal with the complexity of making your build and everything, you just want somebody else to do it that you know will make the build pretty good. I'm your guy. So um, if you're interested, just email me at disturbedmods@gmail.com, and a link will be in the description. But if you're not interested in that, that's what this video is for. So. I believe I'm going to start off with the DPS, the toughness, and the skill power, and then I think I'll go into individual gear rolls, and then I'll go into what weapon types are best for certain things, what gun talents are good nowadays, and what um, weapon mods are good. The reason that I'm only going to be covering these is just because I think this is the fundamentals of your build, so like if you get on a character right now, regardless of what gear set you're using, regardless of all that stuff, all this information will translate to you and you'll be able to you know incorporate all of this into your own build so i think that's kind of cool but regardless let's get right into it so starting off with the dps i don't know if it's broken or not skillet made a video about it and then i think they said that they were going to change it i really don't know i still refuse to believe it because there's still stuff that it doesn't take into account that it's never going to take into account so just as a borderline just statement never trust the dps stat. just just don't worry about it all right Sometimes it might be worth it to, to listen to, but other times, not really. Like, it's, it says that my M1A has more DPS than my uh, MP5, and that's just because the RPM on the M1A is 300, but, I mean, let's be real. Are you really going to be shooting your M1A at max RPM? Hell no. So, I don't know. Just don't listen to the DPS stat. It's, it's been false for a really long time, and even if they do change it, I don't think they're going to get it right. And it's just better to go off of gut and, you know, what's actually real math that's um, happening as opposed to just this number being inflated by a bunch of other stuff but regardless now we're going to move on to toughness um one quick side note is that if you are in a world tier your toughness is going to be ridiculously inflated because the armor cap in that world tier is going to be lowered i made the mistake of thinking that it was just a ui bug originally like if you're in world tier one it only requires like seven thousand armor or something to get armor caps so then it says like you have 400k toughness oh my god my computer just had a shit fit that was weird it'll say you have a bunch of toughness and then you go to the different world tier and then your toughness went down you're like what the hell happened it's just, it's just the world tier so always be in world tier four if you want to see what your actual toughness is so in terms of how much toughness you want it's roughly 300 to 350 thousand depending upon what you're doing now a lot of people are saying i only have like 168 thousand toughness how the hell is this happening um i'll get into this further when it comes to gear but just as like a TLDR, you just basically need to stack armor on absolutely everything because it's best in slot. Again, I'll get I'll elaborate on this a little bit more in the future, in like five or ten minutes. But for right now, just know that you need to stack armor on everything. And as a rough basis um, to guide yourself on, you want 300 to 350k for your skill power. I don't think it's worth it to stack more than what you normally get. Um, getting it on the backpack, of course, you want armor on the backpack, so it's kind of pointless. 
getting on the mask, uh, you'd rather have other things on the mask, and again, I'll elaborate on that in a minute, but skill power just has so much diminishing returns regarding it. Here, let me see if I have a specialized backpack just so I can prove it to you guys. Look, all right, I will give myself this much more skill power, so let's look at my pulse right now, all right. My tax scanner pulse at 72,000 skill power gives me 16% crit damage, 14% crit chance, and then if I decide to use a specialized backpack, which by itself gives me almost 20k skill power, and then also using it with electronics, I get you know an extra 40, not 40, yeah, 40,000 skill power. Let's see how much 40,000 skill power gave me. I don't remember the previous number. What is this? Three or four percent extra crit damage, and what did I lose? I lost 800 or 900 or a thousand firearms. That is ridiculous. There is no way in hell. 3% or 4% crit damage, whatever the number was, I, I don't remember, but my bad. But there's no way that minute amount of crit damage equates to 900 firearms. Look at the way that, look at my base damage, 12.6k on my MP5, and then I switch back to this. It does have a firearms mod, but whatever, to take it with a grain of salt. I gain, here, I'll just take it off, how about that? Okay, I had 12 point whatever k, now I have 13.7k. 4% crit damage does not equate to that at all. So stacking skill power is, is pointless, and that's the only skill where you would be actually gaining a, a large amount of damage. Sure, maybe in PvP it might be worth it to stack a little bit of skill power for cluster and then have your clusters do a little bit more damage or maybe have your fire turrets do a little bit more, but I really honestly don't think it's worth it to do unless you're going for a build specifically for that, like if you're using Firecrest and you want your turret to be really good. You know, I could be like, okay, you can you can get a specialized backpack or something so that you're not losing out on firearms and you just, you know, instead aren't going for another piece of gear. Like if you're using like three piece firecrest or, or four piece firecrest and then you could go for specialized and savage or something like that. That's okay. But I would never recommend stacking electronics over firearms or something just because of the way that it scales. It does almost nothing. And once you get to around 90k skill power, going past this, just the diminishing returns on it is absurd, so basically just don't ever go past 95k skill power, even even with a full skill build in like a PvE scenario, at the very best, you're going to get like, I don't even know, if you stack full skill power, I haven't tried it, but if you stack full skill power, I bet you probably don't even get more than 30% crit damage, and that's like losing out on a shitload of firearms and a shitload of toughness, and it's just not worth it, and I mean, that's with a pulse with the smart cover all you get is damage resistance and weapon stability and stuff so i'm gonna stop stop going on a tangent about that just don't worry about skill power really it's really not worth it to go for unless you're making a build specifically tailored for it but just as a normal build like uh, just a normal dps pvp build or pve build it's not worth it to go for skill power almost never again you can go for specialized backpacks if you want your heal to do a little bit more and if you want your seeker mine or your flame turret to be a little bit more effective because it isn't that big of a trade-off but trading off 900 electronics or something just a terrible idea so now that we've had these three three things covered now you guys know how to kind of formulate your build based on stamina and firearms um, I would just suggest getting an equal amount of firearms to stamina my gear rolls are pretty garbage right now, but um, in previous videos where I made like an Alpha Bridge PvP build video, I'll have a link to that in the description. I was on the PTS. Uh, I, I had around 4,700 firearms and 4,700 stamina or around those numbers, so I like to have it equal, but it really just depends on what you're running. But like I said, just get around 300 to 350k toughness and then focus everything else on the firearms, and you should be good. Just depends on what you're doing exactly. Now, let's go into specific gear rolls. So. For the chest piece, you're always going to want to go for armor in order to reach armor cap, or you actually can't reach armor cap anymore. Um, let me just get into that real quick. The armor cap is 70%, and I only have 53%. I don't, I don't have enough armor mods, and my armor rolls are pretty terrible on my gear. I realized this. On the PTS, I had about 59% armor. That was the highest I could get it to. The only way that you can reach armor cap is by using... A robust chest piece and I forget the name of that um, a, a sturdy holster that is the only way to reach armor cap if you do not have those two things the highest amount of armor you can get I would say 60% if you can get 61% that's v insane but you'd have to have perfect god rolls and everything the highest that you can get without that is 60% but the cap is 70% I don't know why they don't just make the cap 60% it makes literally no sense but just so you know um, 
there is no reaching cap anymore. You just want to stack as much armor as you possibly can because the cap is so weird. I don't, I don't know, whatever. But so on a chest piece, you want to go for armor. Now for the other stat, it really depends on what you're doing. Uh, health can be really good. You can go for health on kill. It's a pretty minute amount, so probably not really worth it to do that. Exotic damage resilience can be helpful against grenades and stuff because people use it a lot. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, health can possibly be better. It just depends on what you're doing. Um, health on kill. Uh, protection from elites really not that great. So on a chest piece, it's pretty much the same. Also in PVE, you want damage to elites as well because damage is just it's just more damage. But in PvP scenarios or something, you just want armor and health, and you'd be perfectly fine. Um, the other things, it, I mean, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. I'd just say health or exotic damage resilience. Chest piece, it doesn't really matter that much. On a mask, you have some leeway. I would, personally, I always run DPS builds, so I'm always going to go for crit chance because it's just more return for my value, but more value for my return, what am I saying? But um, going for skill power, like I mentioned before, just really isn't going to give you that much. You only get like 5 or 6k. Maybe they scaled the numbers up, did they? I can actually, I probably have one. Nope, oh, okay, I don't. All right, well, they don't have... The, the skill power isn't really worth it to go for, so I would just say go for crit chance if you're doing a damage build. Also, in PvE, you can go for something like damage to elites. You can also get exotic damage resilience, though it isn't really, it's not really that effective, and I think it's a lot more about doing damage now as opposed to being super tanky. And, I mean, 3,000 health as compared to 3.5% crit chance is kind of pointless as well. So, on a mask, basically just crit chance in PvP or PvE if that's what you can get. And then in PvE, I would like to go for damage to elite just for the most damage. Hopefully that makes sense. For your knee pads, it's just piss poor easy. You want armor. Um, if you're doing PvE, killing NPCs a lot, try to get enemy armor damage because it's a flat 12% damage. This is... I'll probably make a separate video going on about that, but... You just want armor on the knee pads. Pretty straightforward there. Armor on the backpack again to reach that cap. On your gloves, it's pretty much the exact same. The numbers have been scaled down drastically, but you still want basically the same thing. This is from my PvP build. I'm using SMG damage, crit chance, and crit damage. If you were to do PvE, I would say you could go for, um, I don't have it, but you could go for damage to elites again instead of LMG damage because it will give you more than how much this is equal to as a percentage so damage to elites would probably be a little bit better but just for an all around build I'm going for just crit chance, crit damage and SMG damage or whatever your gun that you're using damage, flat damage is probably going to be the best way to do it, it's pretty cookie cutter just like it was back before and for here you want armor as well, I'm probably going to make a separate video going on about the armor thing because I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they didn't realize this is a problem they wanted to get rid of build homogenization, though they somehow managed to make it worse. I guess they increased the level of build diversity with things being quote unquote balanced. I have my own opinions about this. So there are a few more builds. I think that's just due to the fact that people are a little bit ignorant right now because the update just came out. So they're trying builds and they think that it's good because it sounds good on paper, but they haven't tried anything. So just give like the meta a few weeks to formulate and then it won't be as much of a diverse build meta as everybody keeps saying that it is because it's basically just as balanced or as it was in 1.3 and we all know 1.3 was not balanced at all and if anything I think it's worse um, stacking on armor on every single piece I think is terrible it's not it, it required I don't I don't know it's just it's so cookie cutter it's so cookie cutter it's just there's no form of diversity there is no reason I would ever go for crit damage, like a 5% amount of crit damage, look 7% skill haste, why would I trade 7% skill haste for like, I don't know how much armor this is, probably like 5% or something, possibly even 10%, I don't really know, actually I can just, or no, I, yeah I can just check right now, I was at 53%, what am I at now, 48%, 5%, why would I trade 5% armor for 7% skill haste, or 9000 skill power, or Oh my god, signature ability resource gain, or like 8% crit damage. It's not worth it, and it's, it's, oh, you want me to go for, um, go for 2,000 health over 1,200 armor? Like, it, it baffles me that the developers didn't catch on to this, and I think that they did. Uh, look, okay, okay, I need to stop myself. I'm like, I'm gonna go on a tangent on this forever. I'll probably make a separate video devoted to talking about the balance of 1.3 and everything, but whatever, I'm sorry. 
Just know that you want armor and everything. Everything is pretty much just cookie cutter as it was before. Now let's get into weapons. This is extremely subjective. This is probably the most subjective part of this video. Uh, it really depends on the build that you're running, etc. But what I'm just going to do, just to make it easier for everybody, I'm going to name one or two of the best guns for each gun class so you know which guns are best. Now, and then I'll maybe I'll give some other insights afterwards. So for SMGs, SMGs you would probably want to use with Alpha Bridge or Predator's Mark. I would not use SMGs in PvE though, as they don't do as much damage as assault rifles. So that that's kind of the format that I'm going to go with this. And then the best SMGs that you could use, the MP5 is the best right now, and the MP7 is still good for burst damage, though the sustain isn't great, and the AUG has really good sustain as well. Um, everything else is kind of lackluster in comparison, but the MP5 is the best in that category. Um, but you only really want to use SMGs when it comes to Alpha Bridge or Predator's Mark because nothing else is really worth it to use an SMG for or with I mean. Now for shotguns uh, this is the only thing that I really haven't tested because I am not that big of a shotgun user. SASGs are really good in PvP because you can kind of just hip fire them. I personally don't really like using them. I don't really have that much input to give on shotguns. If you want to use shotguns play around with it yourself. I know stuff about every other gun type but with shotguns I'm I'm ignorant. I don't really know much. So I'm just going to say the SASG and the M870 are still good, but you know, take everything with a grain of salt. For sniper rifles, for PVE, the SVD is the best because I don't do I have an SVD in my inventory? Not at the moment. But the SVD is the best because due to the rate of fire um, being very similar to the M1A and the M1A being nerfed, the SVD has almost the same amount of base damage and with the M1A being inadvertently nerfed due to the fact that weapon mods were nerfed, which I'll go into in a second. Uh, you lose a bunch of stability and accuracy. Even with the accurate talent, the SVD still just shits on this because the SVD is still a laser. While this, you can't shoot at very high fire rates, therefore making the throughput DPS of the SVD significantly higher. So the SVD is the best in a PvE scenario or if you're going to use a semi-auto in PvP. And then, of course, if you're going to use a bolt action, the classic M44 is the best due to its higher amount of base damages. Sorry, I don't have one in my inventory. I didn't really think of it, but you can you can gauge what I'm saying. But the M44, the classic one, is really good because it has higher base damage. Though you are losing crit damage on something, the only reason you're really going to want to use that is just for these really hard-hitting shots to hopefully one-shot somebody. And you're not really relying on that to be a crit to one-shot them. So getting crit damage on the grip or like losing crit damage because you don't have a grip on the classic one really isn't that big of a deal for assault rifles and pvp the lvoa oh, oh yeah i forgot my format what you would use um a sniper rifle with you could use sniper rifles with hunter's faith with um possibly banshee like the best way to use sniper rifles is like three hunter's faith because of the headshot damage uh century and then this is mainly in PvE. A lot of people use it in PvP too to be able to one shot. You have to have really good accuracy to do that though. For anything else, it's really not worth it to run in M1A. If you're running like Predator's Mark or Alpha Bridge, it's not worth it to run a sniper at all. Now moving on, because you want to be stacking headshot damage. Now moving on to assault rifles. Assault rifles you want to use with Predator's Mark. You can use it with Banshee. You can use it with Alpha Bridge. Assault rifles you can use with almost every single build in the game because they're probably the most diverse and they don't really rely on a lot. Um, it's kind of confusing to explain, but the best assault rifles in class are probably the LVOAC, since it's an M4 variant and M4s, the LVOAC has a little bit more stability than the M4s, but the LVOAC, due to its higher RPMs and damage, that's probably the best in PvP, but in PvE, I'm going to say the G36 is the best because if you, lose, if you miss just one or two extra bullets with the LVOAC, the extra RPM and the extra damage that you're getting automatically makes it not worth it anymore if you're just missing one or two shots if that makes any sense because the g36 is really stable while the lvoac has a lot of recoil so if you like do the numbers and you um, add up all the damage per second that you would be getting off of an lvoac if you had like max accuracy and a g36 the lvoac pulls ahead a little bit but then if you take into account with an lvoac you probably miss an extra five bullets those five bullets make the g36 skyrocket over the lvoa so in pvp uh the lvoa is good because at close range it's really not that difficult to you know stabilize your gun but in pve when there's npcs from far away you're probably going to be missing a lot of shots and the g36 would be better in that scenario and 
for I don't have an LMG in my inventory, but LMGs are good. I I don't think they're that good right now. I kind of have to prove this to people. I don't think they're that good, but if you only have an LMG, um, I would say probably you could use it with Banshee. You could use it with I wouldn't suggest using it with Predator's Mark. Assault rifles would be way better. Um, you could use it with Alpha Bridge, though I don't think that's the best idea. If you're going to use a, a LMG, though, I would say the best build to do that with would probably be Hunter's Faith. So best LMGs, L86 in PvP, um, M60 is good in PvP too if you have really good accuracy and you can time your reloads really well and if you're doing 1v1s, but I'd probably recommend the L86 to the majority of people. And then in PvE, probably the L86. I haven't really done the numbers for PvE, but it's probably the L86. But SR rifles are better than LMGs in almost every way. So I... Or, uh, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. For PV, for PVE, assault rifles are way better. I have to run the numbers for PVP, so don't quote me on that. So that's it for the for the guns. Now let's just go into how they changed uh, weapon mods and how you want to roll them. So as you can see right here, this is a scope. The way that scopes and basically almost every other weapon mod works is that you have one number at the very top, and this is your highest value. So for example, here I have. The highest number is crit damage, and then the other two numbers are going to be low values, and these values are always going to stay somewhere around the same. So as you can see right here, like my crit damage is what's high, and then I have low crit chance, and then low headshot damage. And these are the rolls of the low of the lows of these. These don't flip flop. These always stay around the same. So like right here, the crit damage is around the same, and the crit chance is around the same. Now this is a terrible scope, and this isn't isn't really representative of what I'm saying. I don't know why this scope is actually so bad just looking at it, but usually what happens is this is a good example. Um, the higher the number up here will be the highest. The top number will be the highest value for that specific trait or crit chance or something, whatever it may be. So usually if you're going to have a scope with headshot damage, it'll be like 18% headshot damage, and then the other two stats will be low. So for example, it would be like, 4% crit damage or 3% crit chance or something like that. Um, this is just a, not that one. This is a terrible example because it's only 5% headshot damage. I think, I don't even know why it's like this. These ones are just, I guess, garbage to use. But for SMGs, I would say use crit damage and then for other guns, probably headshot damage. Um, if you're doing PVE though, headshot damage because you can get a lot of headshots. But um, just know how these have changed and you just want to get a mix of headshot damage, crit damage, and crit chance. That's probably the best install for that. But in terms of scopes for certain guns, for SMGs again, you probably just want to get the main as crit damage. And but in PvP, at least it really it really depends on your build. So I would suggest just waiting until build videos come out to really worry about this and just kind of go off your instinct and what you think looks better because I would have to sit here for another 20 minutes explaining every single scenario in which one mod would be better than another so I'm not really going to go into that um, so this is true for the scope and for the muzzle my muzzle is pretty bad but for the grip it you only want to go for crit damage because that's the only number you can get that's high you can't get headshot damage you can't get crit um, crit chance and you can't get What's the other? Or, yeah, that's the only two. The only other things you can get is like stability, accuracy, optimal range, reload speed, which pales in comparison to 20% flat crit damage. So on a grip, you basically just want 20% crit damage. Again, this just goes to show that there is, they're not very good at balancing the game or whatever. I'm not going to go on a tangent again, but whatever is what it is. On a magazine, um, it's basically the same premise as it was with the scope and everything. It's just a little bit different, but obviously the, the top number is the highest, and then these other two kind of just flip-flop and are interchangeable with the numbers. So 4% reload speed, 5%, you know, very similar here. You can get, to me, the perfect thing for my SMG would be mag size, rate of fire, and crit chance. You can get crit damage, crit chance, reload speed, rate of fire. Um, what else can you get? Yep, that's pretty much the only things that you can get on magazines. So just try to find a good combination of that. You want probably mag size, crit chance, and then one other thing, depending upon what gun you're using. That's probably really good. If you're using like an MP7 or something though, and you don't need the rate of fire, then I would say, um, or no, no, no. I'm not gonna go super in depth with that. 
I'm not going to go super in-depth with that. So hopefully this makes sense. I just wanted to go over kind of how these change. I don't want to go super in-depth and make a, you know, just talk for another 15 minutes about what the best weapon mods are. I think that would just kind of drag the video on. I can probably make a whole separate video dedicated to that. Whew. But yeah, that was, oh, I almost forgot. Modding your gear. My bad, you guys. Modding your gear, it's the exact same as everything else. Just stack the shit. Just stack a shitload of armor. Just stack armor. I don't have enough armor mods because RNG is evil. But you just want to stack armor because the crit or the armor cap is just unreachable. So you just need to stack as much armor as you possibly can. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the mods and performance mods. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys know how this works. You just get performance mods based upon what skills you're using. Um, it really just depends on what skills you like to use and which ones you think are worth it to use. Um, could probably make a separate video dedicated to this too. It's just not super in depth, and I don't really think I need to go worth it. It's kind of self explanatory, so not much explanation there. You can get a performance mod slot on the holster, two on, or no, one on the knee pad, and two on the backpack. So a total of um, one, two, three, four. So yeah, guys, that concludes this. Hopefully, you learned something. Uh, I know some people hate the, the fact that these videos are really long. I just want to give as much information as I possibly can. So yeah, hopefully you guys were able to take all this in and can formulate your builds uh, based upon what I've said. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one. And I'll see you later, guys. Peace out.